of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins. In the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully, my Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In our conversation with our Lord now, we are going to dedicate it to a very special person, not only to us, but also to God in a certain sense. We read in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, that God created man on the sixth day, which was the last day of creation, after which he rested. And the hagiographer or sacred writer, described the creation of man. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. This is a great privilege indeed. Adam and Eve enjoyed their stay in Eden. However, they disobeyed God and were thrown out of paradise. Nevertheless, the merciful God promised a Redeemer. And we read from again from Genesis, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. As explained by exegetes or Bible experts, we see here the figure of Mary, the mother of the Redeemer, Jesus. There's no need for a high degree of theological learning to realize that God could make himself man as seen earlier in the first text from Genesis because he made man in his image and likeness. And therefore, it is not too strange for God to become man. As the Athanasian Creed says, Jesus is God and man. He is not two, but one Christ. And he is one not because his divinity was changed into flesh, but because his humanity was assumed to God. Having gone over this small lump hump, let's discuss briefly, briefly how God became man. From the Genesis reading earlier, we could immediately guess the solution. That is, God would enter the world through a woman. Or in other words, God would be born from a woman. Now, this is the tricky part. How can God enter into the womb of the woman? That was the very same question of Mary to St. Gabriel. This divine messenger answers her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your king's woman, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this the sixth month with her was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. 
as in the to the manner of accomplishing it, let's leave it to the great power of the paraclete. Now is the time to turn to the special woman whom God has chosen even before the foundation of the world. Not only special, but very, very, very special. She has to be full of grace and sinless. Since we are in a time of prayer, we will just repeat the reasoning of the theologians as regards the immaculate state of this most selected woman. Since God could do it, He willed it, and He did it. As you may recall, this is the explanation for the Immaculate Conception. God put His only begotten Son in the most pure womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and thus Our Lady became the Mother of Jesus. This motherhood was true natural motherhood, not a surrogate one, hence not an artificial one. You see, the mother-son relationship was real. There was true human affection. Although Mary was the perfect creature ever made, she was still human and not at par with the divine. It is recorded in the Gospels that she did not understand everything that Jesus told her but kept it in her heart. You may see this in the Gospel of St. Luke. As I was saying, Mary gave all the affection to Jesus as any mother would give to her child. Imagine when Jesus was a baby, Mary had all the sweet caresses for the baby Jesus. You could just imagine, no? she would bring her to her breast no? and kiss her many times. and Just like any, any mother, no? especially you mothers, you, you have done this with your babies. And how do you react when you lose your little child in a mall? Not in a, a small, no? You know what I mean, small. But a big mall. And it's getting late. The mall closure is almost there. Then you finally find him in a toy fund shop. With a lot of affection, you would ask him, Where did, why did he go there? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore what the excuse of the boy. What matters is she finds him. This is a similar case to the finding of Jesus in the temple in Jerusalem. Mary was so worried because she couldn't locate Jesus. It was the responsibility of Mary and Joseph to keep Jesus. Then their joy was exuberant when Jesus was found. It's interesting to note that babies cling to their mothers. Aside from the human experiences that we have had that we have observed I would like to add another thing so to illustrate this I'd like to share an experiment I watched the lecture about human affectivity the video was about the baby monkey who did not grow up with his mother there were two figures presented to him 
want to give him food and the other a caricature looking like a mother monkey the baby monkey would spend more time with the mother monkey and enough time to get food from the other figure and when a figure that represented danger was introduced he ran to the mother figure this just to confirm our dependence on our mothers and just to recall the second sunday of of may is dedicated to the mothers so we also would like to dedicate it to our mother mary more could be said about this wonderful bonding of mary and her son jesus but what we would like to underline now is that mary is the most special to god through her motherhood and therefore she is our most or rather best channel to be closer to god i'm reminded of an exclamation of a saint how people like to be reminded of their relationship with distinguished figures in literature, in politics, in the army, in the church. Sing to the Immaculate Virgin, reminding her, Hail Mary, daughter of God the Father. Hail Mary, mother of God the Son. Hail Mary, spouse of God the Holy Spirit. Greater than you, none but God. Greater than you none but God so no one is in between no? God and Mary and still that that space no is still great but compared to us she is closest hence the easiest way to God is through Mary Jesus gave her to us as our mother at the foot of the cross. Remember, Our Lady represent, requested her son to do the first miracle, that of turning the water into wine in Cana. The same saint we cited earlier has another advice. We go to Jesus and we return to him through Mary. We are frail human beings and easy for us to go astray. Thus, we are counseled to go back to God through Mary. So if you wish to know the secrets of a science or art, you need to go to the Master. In the science of God, the closest and most knowledgeable is his mother so to deal with and go deeper in the knowledge of god the only way is through mary let us renew then our devotion to mary in this month of may since god is infinite we can't exhaust our dealings with him but our mother mary will be instrumental in this creative dealing. Having reminded ourselves of this Marian devotion, let's turn our attention to what is in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. At most in her heart is the salvation of everyone. Of course, we know that this is the will of God, which is specified in the first letter of saint paul to timothy this is good and it is acceptable in the sight of god our savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth as good children of mary this should be our dearest desire to help people go to heaven 
as children, we may not love our siblings so much. But as we love our mother in high degree, we followed her advice to love our brothers and sisters. This is also how we would like to conduct ourselves. Because of our great love for our mother Mary, we need to love our fellow men. We wish the best for them, which is no other than life everlasting. For that, we want to be closer to God, and the best way is through Our Lady. For their salvation, we have to pray to the Mother of God intensely and help them to develop their Marian devotion. Although I have said this anecdote a countless times, I'd like to repeat it now. A college boy invited his friend to a center of Opus Dei. This friend was uh, quite uh, worried on the orthodoxy of the place because he was not familiar with it. But lo and behold, as soon as he entered the, div the living room, he noticed a picture of Our Lady and deep inside him, he felt safe after seeing her picture. I also heard another anecdote from somebody. He said that among the virtues one should look for a spiritual director is his piety and it should include his devotion to Mary. Now there was a judge who attended a spiritual retreat and he realized the priest was always talking about Our Lady. So after the retreat, he wanted his wife to meet the retreat master for that Marian devotion. Among the many devotions to Mary, the rosary, in my opinion, stands out. The word rosary comes from the flower rose. Each Hail Mary could represent a rose that is offered to God. Hence, at the end of the rosary, it's like offering to God a bouquet of roses. Talking about uh, bouquet of roses, I remember reading an anecdote of a woman who had a dream. The dream consisted of her offering to God a bouquet of flowers, but placed in a dirty container. No matter how beautiful the flowers were, the thing was not pleasing to God. Later on, it was explained to her that the dirty container was she, who had many sins, and her prayers which were the flowers were not so acceptable to God. She needed repentance. On one occasion, a boy asked me if his rosaries were useless in those times he had mortal sins. I answered that they were not meritorious, but not useless because they could facilitate his conversion. The origin of the rosary goes all the way to the early centuries of Christianity when the laity wanted to imitate the monks in praying the liturgy of the hours. But since many of them were illiterate, they prayed the vocal prayers, especially the Our Father, in substitute of the 150 Psalms of the breviary. They used a rope with knots as a tool for counting the prayers. Later, it was formalized by an apparition of Our Lady to St. Dominic of Guzman, the founder of the Dominican Order in the 13th century. Since then, it has been enriched throughout the centuries up to the latest edition of the Luminous Mysteries by St. John Paul II 
in the threshold of our present century. And of course, the rosaries have not been made with a rope, with knots, but of different materials, wood, stones, rose petals, and all sorts. No? Now, how can the rosary be a good prayer when it is so repetitive? It could be boring when we focus on the number of times we pray the vocal prayer, especially the Hail Mary. Listen to an advice of St. Jose Maria in his introduction to his book, Holy Rosary. But in the rosary, we always say the same things, always the same. And don't those who are in love always say the same things to each other? Could it not be that there is monotony in your rosary because instead of pronouncing words like a man, you emit sounds like an animal, while your mind is very far from God? Moreover, listen. Before each decade, we are told the mystery to be contemplated. That's the end of the quotation. So the secret lies in the contemplation of the mysteries. So why don't we start meditating on the mysteries? We could put ourselves in the different scenes of the rosary mysteries. There at the stable of Bethlehem or at the Calvary, smelling the stench of decaying cadavers. The contemplation of the mysteries is really meaningful when we consider the words of a Pope pointing out that the Rosary is like a summary of the Gospels. Another bomb for the routinary aspect of the Rosary is the manner of saying the vocal prayers. Many people in churches or in communities seem to pray the rosary as if it were a race, doing it the fastest they can. Though, in uh, my experience also, I realized that not everyone does that. No? So in one church in Baguio, I observed that the people were praying it very well. No? Not too fast, not very slow either, but there was time no, to somehow cherish the words of the Hail Mary. Monsieur Scriba would recommend that we stress some word or words of the vocal prayers. For example, put emphasis to the Mother of God or pray for us sinners now. And in our situation now in the pandemic, we could stress that word now. It could also be more meaningful in each decade if it is offered up for some intention. A young girl could be coached to offer up the first mystery for the Pope, bishops, and priests, second for her family, third her teachers and classmates, fourth for the old and the sick, and fifth for the sinners and the poor souls in purgatory. Well, this is just one example. You could have uh, thousands of intentions. One special way to pray the rosary in the month of May is to do a pilgrimage to a shrine of Our Lady. It could also be to a church dedicated to her. It doesn't have to be outside your town or city or country. Nevertheless, it could be done also in that way. One manner of doing it, not exclusive, is to pray the three parts of the rosary in the pilgrimage. The main part is said 
at the shrine or church. The two in transit if possible. And walking is more meritorious if we could do it, the one in transit. Then a little sacrifice that uh, accompanies this pilgrimage would be more pleasing to Mary. To bring relatives and friends in the pilgrimage will also add to the joy of our mother. But now the pilgrimage could be just virtual, that is through the social media. Or I don't know what else you could do. If you have some uh, images there. No? In the present circumstance we are in, please see if we could be more creative in praying the rosary well. Praying the rosary as a family is praiseworthy. You may gain a plenary indulgence doing it together with the usual conditions. From the seminarians of different dioceses, I've learned a few innovations. In Leyte, they pray the rosary in different languages each day. When I preach a close retreat for the seminarians of Lingay and Dagupan, each one prayed the vocal prayer, and then the next person, the next vocal prayer. So if one starts with Our Father, then the one Hail Mary, and then another one Hail Mary, and then to the end, the glory be. No? So in this way, each one has to be very attentive which one has to pray, whether it's Our Father, the Hail Mary, or the glory be. You may decide to pray the rosary in different venues, uh, one in the living room, uh, one in the garden, I don't know where else you could do it, along the corridors. No? So, Another idea is for each member of the family to say something about the mystery before praying it. No? So they could make some research or uh, they could read something from a book or what have you. No? Others may just uh, content themselves by reading from a book about the consideration of the rosary. So what I'm trying to say is that people are pious and lovingly praying and routine is put aside. No? So really, the important thing there is uh, to do it with love. At the end of the day, then, what is more interesting to see is a smile on the lips of Our Lady in these days of May to show our love to her in many different ways, starting with the Marian devotions and as we have put emphasis to the rosary and many other things like uh, looking at the images and pictures for lady and saying an uh, aspiration to her every day and many other things maybe uh, some would like to uh, if there are some flowers um, from the garden you could put some on the image of our lady or it doesn't have to be real flowers but spiritual flowers that can make the life of others more joyful. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.